So this morning we're climbing up a hill um, to get to a very historic landmark that's actually a fake. So join me this morning and let's see where this journey takes us. Okay, so I've reached the summit, or the top of Canoe Hill, which is about 795 feet above sea level, but from this viewpoint here, on the left there we can see Ben Chonzi. Straight in front of us we can see, well, it's under the clouds, but Shahalian. And, uh, and on the far right there we can see Ben Vraki. So what I'll do is, I'll head to the viewpoint of this uh, ancient location and let's see what images we can capture. So this is Canoe Tower. That's Canoe Tower there that you can see and that's the River Tay that's snaking past the Canoe Tower. The Canoe Tower was built in the early 18th century uh, by Thomas Hay who was the ninth Earl of Canoe and he built it to resemble castles on the Rhine that he admired when he was touring Europe and Germany. Um, and this, in the addition to the tower here, there's uh, castle and battlements that he built a lot, and he also built a large stone table. So what we will do is we'll walk closer towards the tower and we'll see if we can get close-up images. And Canoe Tower was actually given to the city of Perth in 1924 and is now part of Scotland's kind of very first woodland park back in 1991 and we won't see it from here but down on the right hand side which we will see from the other side is Kinfon's castle so let me start getting some photographs and we'll come back soon right, so I'm going to start off with a kind of wider shot of the tower so that I can get so the sun's above me so again recently we've been coming to locations and shooting into the sun um, so again, we've got another tricky one because it could silhouette out the tower, but I've put my ISO up to ISO 200 so I can get some detail in the tower. I've got F11 and I've got a 125th of a setting shutter speed. So I've focused in on the castle, eh, on the tower. I'll take that shot. I'm just checking, because I'm shooting into the sun, when we were taking shots of the core pack wreck, we were getting quite a bit of lens flare and I can't see any lens flare in this image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I will have to change my focus point just because I've zoomed in. I'll take that shot again. I'm just keeping the same settings and that's quite nice. I've got a 1.2 ND grad in just to darken the sky. So that effectively just gives me like a pair of sunglasses for the sky to try and keep the sheen away from the sun. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull right back and get quite a wide view 
of the tower. I'm going to try and go down, just adjust the camera down a bit, level it off. I need to go back in and adjust my focal point. So I've got my focal point, so I've now got a wider view. I've got the canopy, the trees in the frame. I've got the bushes below me in frame. And again, that could be quite nice. Let me just try that. It's just a shame the sun's right in my face. Um, but this is probably the only location that you can get that iconic shot. That's us finished in this location. And uh, what we'll do is we'll wander over to the tower. I've never actually physically been to the tower. I've always stood in this viewpoint and took shots before. So we'll give it a bash and let's see what happens. down the hill I've spotted another viewpoint so oh right underneath canoe hill well how cool is this right I think we'll spend five minutes here and we'll get some shots okay so I've set my camera up here we're right actually underneath I didn't know this existed so this is fantastic something new so what I've got here is we've still got a strong sun right in my face so I might pull back a wee bit further and get some shade from the, the bushes here but I've got the, the canal tower on the top left hand side of my image and I've got the separation between the tower and the river so I've got the river snaking past it I've increased my shutter speed to a fifteenth of a second I'm still at f11 and I'm at ISO 100 I'm just going to speed up the shutter speed and then that gives my exposure compensation meter I'm bang on I've got a wee bit of flare on the top left so I might speed that up a wee bit further to 25th of a second and the highlights are gone wow right so I'm going to zoom in now and see if I can get a close-up shot but what I'd like to try and get is the tower with the river underneath it so if I focus in on the bushes next to the tower. I take my shot, I'm still using the same settings and because I don't have the lens flare, sorry, because I don't have the highlight clippings from the sky, I'll push the ND grad filter down to give me the sky and that's really nice. That's, wow, what a cracking wee spot. I'm going to move back a wee bit just to see if I can get rid of the lens flare. Just bring my tripod down a bit. I'll turn the camera around, let's see what we've got, oh wow, oh that's really nice, so I've got, I've actually got a frame, a natural frame in the image where the canopy that tree is at the top, so I'll keep that in because it's actually quite nice, I've got a tenth of a second f11 ISO 100, my exposure meter saying it's a wee bit overexposed, so if I drop to 20, if I speed up to a twentieth of a second, that keeps my exposure at zero and now what I'll do is I'll tilt the camera down I'll increase the speed of my shutter speed I've still got the castle and the canal tower in focus and that could be quite nice Right, so what I'm going to try and do is turn the camera around into landscape mode by portrait mode and see if I can get a shot of the tower let me just adjust polarizer yeah. And what I'm trying to do here is frame it in such a way that I've got the shadow, I've got the tree line here above me, I've got a shadow and light cast in the foreground here. So I'll focus in to the tower. I'll take that shot. Let me just switch to autofocus. Oh wow, that could be quite a nice shot. Right. Okay. So let's keep wandering and let's see if there's other wee hot spots that I can stop at. We've arrived 
However, for something that looked so grandeur from a distance. So we were taking photos over on the cliff edge there and then further down. But now I've got here, it's just a wall and a tower. So if I go inside the tower and then I turn the camera up, you can see the chimney or the hole and through the windows well this is definitely a wee turn up for the books so well, to be honest I wasn't quite sure what we were going to see but I thought we would be seeing more than this I hadn't realised it was just a facade anyway Let's, we're here, so let's make the most of it and see what I do. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking a shot of the tree beside the tower here. But between the tower and the tree, we can see uh, the River Tay. So I've got a tenth of a second F11 ISO 100, and I've got my ND grad down quite deep. I'll take a second shot. It's actually quite windy up here now. Um, so I was going to take, I was actually going to take the drone out, but um, there's a lot of crows, so they might be upset. But we'll we'll try it and see later on. Right, so I'm focusing in now on the river. I've still got the trees as a kind of frame. I'll take the shot, and yeah, that could be quite a nice shot as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn round because I've got. A really nice view of the Perth Bridge and that is a really really nice shot so I'm just going to lift wow that's stunning right so if I just set up my focus I'll take the shot so I've got a tenth of a second F11 ISO 100 I'm a wee bit overexposed so if I speed up the shutter speed to a fifteenth of a second I've got my exposure bang on I'm just going to turn the camera around so we can get more of the, the hill in and then we've got the road snaking to the left hand side and that could be a really really nice shot so if I go to the other extreme and go far left yeah that could be really really nice I'm just so let's see if we can get a kind of side shot of the tower um, what I might have to do is change my lens and put the wide angle lens on. So let's do that and let's see what we can, let's see if we can get it in one shot. Alright, so I've popped the wide angle lens on. So I'm going to take some shots without the, the polarizer and the ND grad. Okay, so I'm getting a lot of vignette in here because I'm so close to the tower. So I've, I've taken better shots and what I've done is I've done a three focus stack image, an underexposed, a normal exposed, an overexposed shot for the tower. So that'll probably turn out better because when I take my shots here, I've got a, I really do have a lot of vignetting going on just because I'm at the widest aperture at 16mm. So I'm not so sure that's going to work. But the shot I took without the filter being on will probably work okay. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll take a couple of shots here anyway, just in case. Um, and then we'll see how that works out and then I can share those images with you. I'll slow my shutter speed down a quarter of a second and take that shot. And that, that actually could be quite nice. The only thing is with a wee bit slower shutter speed, because it's quite windy, the tree might be a wee bit blurry. So we'll see. What I'll do is I'll keep using the wide angle lens and I'll move further back and then we'll see if we can get a different composition of the tower.
point, so to set up our landscape shot, so I've got the tower and the edge of the building and the focus in the shot, the sun's just went away, so I'm going to have to increase the shutter speed. So what I'll do is I'll put the filter down, I'll take that shot, I'm still getting a lot of vignette and I'm going to change this lens because even if I crop, I might lose quite a bit of the tower in my image and there's the sun coming back out again so <laughs> the, the light keeps changing all the time <laughs> because of the clouds so sometimes I've got sun and then sometimes I haven't so yep that'll be fine so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for a different angle I'll take one more shot I'll see if there's a kind of view through a window not the ones that with the railings because that's not good but there's one there but it might just have a bush but I'll go to the left and then I'll go to the right and we'll just see what different compositions we can get. Right, so I'm taking this shot, I'm going into the sun and the reason I'm shooting into the sun is the sun's casting some quite nice shadows so we're getting an exaggerated kind of shape of the wall with a window and I'm kind of hoping that turns out so far I've turned the the ND grad down to the left so it's tilting so I'm trying to kind of minimise the amount of glare that's coming in for the top left where the sun is but these shadows are really really nice uh, and it might add that could be quite a nice black and white image and it's not something I do very often because black and white is something I've never really experimented with but this might make quite a nice black and white image so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over that side and see if we can get a shot of the tower So this is a tricky shot, so I've had to turn the camera round so the camera, I'm using the neck of the tripod and I've extended it out so I can tilt the camera up. I'm going to have to go down and let's see if I take a shot. So what I might, so because the inside is so dark, if I do a three shot exposure, I should get a bright version for the bricks of the tunnel and the, the, the tower let me just check what I've got if there's any kind of blue up there we'll take that shot and uh, that could be quite a different image actually so let's uh, turn the camera off oh I'm looking forward to see what that looks like I've spotted this uh, seat as a viewing point, so what I thought I'd do is I'll have a shot of the seat and I'll have the landscape in the background. I focused in in the background so it's sharp because the F16, that should be sharp enough. I'm just going to increase the shutter speed a touch um, just because I was getting some highlight clippings on the back of the bench. And then any rubbish or debris aside, I can see like somebody's put a a dirty rag there then I can take that out in Photoshop right so I'm going to try a couple of other shots I'm going to see if I can get a shot of that tree although I can't get the full tree in but it might be quite nice with the vista behind it and uh, let's see what other photographic opportunities we can get here. I'm just taking a couple of shots of the River Tay out towards Dundee I'm um, just through this I can't go too forward because I'm right at the cliff edge and there's warning signs everywhere so there might be a nice wee shot of the tower from here but what I'm going to have to do here is I've, I've got the ND grad on but the challenge I've got is I'm right in front of the sun so I'm using the ND grad to, to dull down the sky but I'm hoping that'll be enough and yeah that's a really nice image so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn around because that's quite a nice view of the tower and I'll turn around I'll take shots of the tower Alright so I'm just walking up towards the woods and I'm just looking to see 
I spotted a carving earlier on. Ah, oh, there it's. So let's walk in. Let's have a wee look. And let's see what we can find in the woods. Alright, so. This carving looks like an eagle. Well, that's really cool. So, what I'll do is I'll just put nuts there so there's obviously squirrels come and eat, I think. Right, let's get a wee shot. Alright, so I'll get set up for this shot. Let's see how close we need to be or how far. Let's see what settings we've got. Right, so if I actually reduce this to f5.6, speed up my shutter speed to a twentieth of a second. I've still got ISO 100. Now what I'll do is I'll just level the camera up. It's got a great, it's got a great weathered texture. It's actually quite it's got quite a nice warming look, but from where I am with my camera, it looks pretty cold actually. So I'm just going to turn this around and I'll take a shot. I'll just dip that down. So we've got the full tree stump. Oh, and there's a, it looks like a crow or a seagull carved on the side of the wood as well. That's really, really nice. And we'll get some nice shadows cast on it as well. Great. So what I'll do is I'll move a wee bit closer and then we'll get a, a closer up shot of the eagle. All right, so we've got close up. I'm just double checking that sharp. I'll take my shot. Oh, that's really, really nice. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a wee bit further. Double check my focus. What I'm doing is I'm focusing on the head of the eagle. Take that shot. Oh, that's really, that is, that's really nice. And then I'll zoom out just a bit. And then that way I'll dip this down so that we can get the full view of the carving of the, I think it's a seagull. Or if it's not a seagull, it could be a crow, because there's when I was at the tower, there's lots of crows. Um, and I put the drone up for a wee while, but it's far too windy. I kept getting weather warnings or wind warnings. So I only went up so high and then I pulled it back down again. Right, oh, that's really nice. So let me try a frontal shot. It's amazing what you find when you wander around some of the woods. This is a great wee find. That's awesome. Right, so if I zoom out a bit and give them a wee bit more space, double check the focus on the head. There, take that shot. And I'm shooting at f5.6, a twentieth of a second, ISO 100. And the reason I'm shooting at 5.6 is I want to get the detail of the eagle, but I want the background to be blown out. And that's actually what we'll hopefully achieve. Right, so I think we'll uh, end the video here. I'll scout my way around, but I think this woodland would be great in the autumn. So I might come back here in the autumn and look for shots of some of the trees and the colours because it's uh, absolutely beautiful. So I hope we can make a video of this and uh, here's hoping it works out. I know it's just one subject, but Hopefully we've got a variety of images and hopefully those images can out, even although it's been really challenging with the sun back in our face again. But hopefully we can edit the images so that that doesn't make too much of a difference and doesn't spoil them. But uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video.